Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Here we share beginner-friendly coding tutorials on Scratch, Minecraft, Roblox, web programming, and many more. And today what we're going to do is design a mini golf game using Scratch. In this part one of the project, we will focus on the basic controls of the game and the ball movement. And in the second part, we'll continue with the development of the game in the other parts. So let's get started. So before we um, start, I would also want to show you a little bit of a um, demo of how the game will work. So as you can see here, we have sort of a mini golf course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim for the ball to go inside the hole right here. So what I'd have to do is I had to click on this red dot and then click on my space bar to make the ball move there. So here you go. And now I am in level two. We'll start by creating a new empty project on Scratch. And the very first step will be to create an empty field. And what we want to do is draw a green square in the background and add a rectangle of a different shade of green and make sure it has a black border. All right, so here I'm going to make the background, okay, which is a darker green color. I'll do something like that. Okay, and then in the middle, I'll have another one. So I'll do it, I'll do it a different shade of green. Okay, and then my outline, I want black, so that's good. Okay, then I will make it look something like this. Now we'll add two sprites, one for the ball and one for the hole. So for the ball sprite, you can just make a white circle and resize it so it's not too big. So let's do the ball first. Okay, so first of all, I need to delete the scratch cat. Then I'm going to go ahead and draw a ball. I'm going to choose a white color. Okay, something like that. Now I'm going to need to resize it. Okay, so that's the ball right there. Let me also rename the sprite to ball. Then I'll duplicate it right here and then make the other one the hole right now let me fill it with a different color of course i will do a gray color like so and i'm going to put it right opposite the ball i think i'm going to make it a little bigger let's say 80 or a little smaller 70 like so place it right here now we can define the controls of the game. So we'll use the distance to the mouse to determine the power of the shot, and then the position to determine the angle of the shot. So to do that, we need to add some blocks into the golf ball. Okay, so now that I'm in the golf ball um, sprite, I'm going to go ahead and add in the when green flag click. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that the ball sprite, uh, the position is reset in the beginning. So I'm gonna go to motion, choose this block, go to X, Y. I'm going to choose to do minus 175 for X and zero for Y. Okay, so it's gonna look pretty much the same thing right here. And then what I want to do is I wanna go ahead and also set the direction. So I'm going to say point in direction 90, all right? And then I'm going to set the speed of it. So I'm going to go to control, I'm sorry, variable, and then make a variable called speed. And then I'm going to say set speed to zero. And another variable is moving. So moving, okay. And then I'm going to also set moving to zero. Now, another thing I wanna do is that I wanna set up a conditional and this, if, this conditional is that I want to only point to the mouse pointer if the ball's not moving. So here I'm going to set the condition to equal to zero, the moving um, variable, I'm gonna set it to equal to zero and we can use moving equals to one whenever we want to stop some actions if the ball is moving, such as this point towards the block. So I'm going to go ahead and control and get the forever loop. And what I'm going to do is set up my condition like I was saying, so get the if. And here I'm, I'm going to say if the moving variable is equal to zero, then that is when I make the ball move towards wherever I clicked just now. So 
So I will go to motion and do a point towards mouse pointer. Now we can start coding the ball movement. So when we press the space bar, the ball will start to move to the direction um, we're facing. So I will start by changing the value of moving to one so that the direction that the ball is facing doesn't change anymore. So we said before that we wanted to control the speed of the ball. So what I'll do right now is I'll set it up so that the max speed of the ball is 20. All right, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to control, I'm sorry, event, and I'm going to say when space key press, so that's when you press on your space bar, I will set my variable moving to one. So set moving to one, and then I'm going to get a condition. So in control, I'll say if. All right, if the distance is bigger than 200, because I want to make it so that the farther away the mouse pointer is from the ball, the faster the ball will travel. So there's actually a block in sensing that does just that. So um, just now I mentioned 200, right? So what I want to do is I want to make the number smaller so that the ball doesn't travel way too fast. So since I said the max speed is going to be 20, I can divide the maximum number of pixels away from another number so that I get 20. So in my case, just now I picked 200 as the max distance. So I have to divide it by 10 to get 20. So I will add that in a block so that the variable speed gets that value. Now, if the value is above 200, then I'm just going to set it to 20 regardless of the value of the distance. Here, I'm gonna go to operators and I'm gonna get the bigger than, and I want to go to sensing and say distance to mouse pointer. Okay, if distance to mouse pointer, like I said, is bigger than 200, then I'm going to set the speed to 20. All right. And then here, what I want to do is I want to add another if. Okay, so I'll say if. Okay, if it's not bigger than 200, then what I want to do. So I go back to operators, I can get the smaller than sign. Let me duplicate this. Okay, so if it is smaller than 200. Actually, let me get the smaller than or equal to. So I'm going to get the or and I'll say if distance to mouse pointer is smaller than 200 or equal to 200. Okay, let me place that right there. Equal to 200. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the speed. Right, let me create some space. Okay, so I'm going to go to my variables and set speed to the okay, divide. So the distance to the mouse pointer divided by 10. Now we can set up a loop to move the ball until it runs out of speed. So what we want to do is first, we want to start by placing a a loop again. So go to control and we're going to get repeat until right here. That's where we're, go we're going to place it. And we're going to say repeat until speed is smaller than zero. Okay, we'll go to variables, grab speed and smaller than zero. And what we want to do next is we're going to say move. Okay, move. And then the speed variable. Okay, so move speed steps, and then we want to change the speed um, by minus 0 0.5 so that we want the ball to slow down while um, when it's about to reach the hole. So we say change speed by minus 0 0.5, okay? And then at the end, we also wanna make sure that moving and speed are both at zero. So set moving to zero and then set speed to zero. Finally, we'll handle the bouncing off the walls part. So to do that, we'll add an instruction inside the loop we have right now for moving the ball. So when the ball touches the color of the edge of the field, then what we're going to do is that it's going to change its direction and starts moving that way. So due to how angles work, we need a different instruction for the vertical and horizontal borders of the field. 
So what we can do is we can add two lines of different colors to the background on the sides of the field so that we can perform two different kinds of checks for changing the direction. So what we're going to do is we're also going to say for the upper and lower borders, we'll set it up to change the direction by 180 minus the current direction. So you can get that direction block from the motion section. And then for the horizontal borders, the change of direction would be 360 minus the current direction. So what I'll do now is I'll go to backdrop, all right, and then add the lines that I was talking about. So here we're going to get the line tool. Okay, and then I'm going to make it a gray color. Okay. All right, gray color. And then I'm going to place it on the upper and lower parts of the edges. So okay, I think we'll need to make it make the line a little thicker. So I think I'll try eight. Okay, let me change it back to gray. All right. Okay, so this is the upper border. Okay, so on one side, and then I want another one. Okay, let me make the line just a little bit bigger. Let's say 12. Okay, so it looks a lot better. And then we have another one in this direction. So that is the other part. And then I'll also make a thicker black line here. So let's say it's nine or let's say 12. Okay, let me readjust this part. Okay, let's do even thicker, 14. And then another part right here, 14. All right. So now let's go back to code. So we want to come back into the ball sprite, and then we're going to add in some conditions. So we're going to say if we are touching the color black, so that is the upper and lower borders. Okay, touching the color black, let me use color dropper for this. Okay, we are going to change the direction. So we say point in direction, and then we're going to do 180 minus its current direction. So 180 minus its current direction. Okay, and then we're going to duplicate this condition and set it up for the left and right borders. So if touching color, uh, let me grab this color right here. If touching gray color, then we'll do 360 minus the current direction. All right, so we're done with the first part of this video and let's try to test it out. So right now, what is going to happen is when I click green flag, the ball is going to appear right here. It's going to sort of follow my mouse. And let's say I move my mouse here. And then when I click space, the ball is going to follow me to that direction. So in the next part, we'll adjust the necessary components for the game, such as the grass obstacle, the water obstacle, and hitting the ball into the hole. So that's all for today. Hope you liked the video and don't forget to subscribe and like our other videos. Also check out the other two videos here while you're waiting for the second part. All right, thank you, bye.